1018. We have a clock now. Isn't that nifty? There are some fishermen out there that go crazy over this fish. That's a mirror carp. Some people call it beautiful. I think it's ugly, but these are just opinions. We're gonna make one in an oversized crankbait version kind of thing. Because this is the kind of weather we're dealing with right now. And I cannot let this chance pass up. This is, this is November, November 3rd, 10 in the morning, 60 degrees. That's insane for here, so. <clears throat> One day. <laughs> I'm losing my touch. I used to just say it like, one day, you know? Then it turned into, one day. And now I'm like, gagging and coughing and, one day. <laughs> Let's just go back to one day. Balsa. Even though it's, the air temperature's pretty high, the water temperature's still pretty low. We've only had a, I think we got into the 30s with water temperature, like 39. Get a nice, Thick piece here. We're gonna draw up what we need for this fat, magnum-sized, oversized mirror carp edition of a, of a big crankbait. Wow. That was a roundabout way to say whatever I just said. Wow. I feel like I need this too. Just a nice chill build. Craziest part, we'll be putting those weird misshapen scales on this bait. Uh, I want, I don't want over five inch crankbait. I want four half, four and half. Picture. A lot of the time I go for an illustration of a mirror carp just to get that body shape down. Like somebody took the time to look very closely at a mirror carp and come up with that shape so you can trust it. I trust that. So I'm gonna copy it. That's what you do with things you trust, you just copy them. We're gonna creep back up. It's gonna be less than four and a half, but that's still a very large crankbait and that belly needs to be bigger. Oh my goodness. This is some intense bait drawing. I used to do this all day at school. I would just draw fishing lures all day. Parents, have you ever thought about that I'm not that good of an example for your kids? Don't just draw baits at school all day, kids, unless you wanna be an awesome bait maker like me. Drew out the lip slot too. That's gonna to be an eighth of an inch lip slot. It's an ugly shape. Usually I like to feel better about the looks of a bait before I start cutting it out like this, but that's the shape I'm going with. You can get balsa, like cutting, what am I? Let's think about what I'm saying before I speak. Balsa wood's very forgiving. You can, uh, you can cut the lip slot way more narrow and then shove whatever you need in there and it's gonna be fine and it'll just be nice and tight. And hardwoods, you can't do that at all. You gotta cut the lip slot perfect every time. But I already have a nice little piece of Lexan right there. That's what we're gonna make the lip material out of, but we can't do that yet. We gotta carve. Let's carve. These mirror carp are pretty fat. So I'm just gonna sand down to these lines. And just like that, <laughs> I should have cut that. That made way too much dust in the shop. But and just like that, we have, uh, man, do I wanna call that good looking? That's not good looking. That looks like if a fish was a pig, that would be the fish or the shape of it right there. That looks like a pig fish. Oink, oink, there's its snout. Okay, enough of that. I'm going for function. I want to catch a fish badly today. I'm going to ponds. I don't think I'm gonna hit the river with this. The rivers are dead. I need to go to a pond and I need this to fish deep and it's an oversized crankbait and it's fall still. So, it, you know, the, in theory, in theory. Let's just leave it at in theory, in theory. That's what all the fishing YouTubers tell me. Size it up in the fall and you get the big fat mama bass to bite. That's what they tell me. It's not been my experience. Let's change that today. We're bringing knife to wood already. Maybe some of you right now are asking, bruh, why didn't you cut your wire slot? Like you had the bait all squared up and nice. You should have cut your wire slot just then. Cause I don't even know if I'm using wire slots on this bait. I got some really long inch and a quarter screw eyes. And I know you're not supposed to use screw eyes on balsa, but that's never stopped me. Once again, parents, I'm a bad example. How dare I even have a platform to spew such nonsense to your children. <coughs> it's that balsa dust. It gives you the powerful sneezes. I'm saying some stupid stuff today.
I suppose I'll be responsible and do a through wire for this bait, I suppose. That means I need to cut a straight line. Come on. Be straight. Oh. <laughs> I put a few gashes into the belly here and up on the nose and stuff, but whatever, it's fine. Jeez. What a pathetic way to ruin this bait. I didn't ruin it, I'm just, I'm, I'm hard on myself, okay? Everything's fine. It's a very straight line. That is undeniable. You guys will see in a second. Like I said, undeniably straight. I guess by straight, I mean like even. It's in the middle. Undeniably in the middle. <laughs> Bait requires some wire. Let's get it all chucked up and straightened out. That's a good way to poke an eyeball out. Just having wire like that smacking around. I do not need this much wire. That's how I straighten my wire. It's a funny noise. Break out the wire bending pliers here. Make some nice clean loops. I've never been one to make really clean wire forms. I just make it work, but I'm gonna try to clean this one up a bit and make it cool, but that's, you know, it's like looped and it narrows back in. That sort of clean stuff, you know? I just don't have the patience for. But I need to grow up. Cause that's a beautiful line tie. It's got shape and everything. That's appreciatable. The heck was that? There's a hint to a project coming up that I can't mention yet, but that's a hint right there. I'm excited for that project. Good Lord, it's gonna be fun. I need to shut up about that though, because you guys are gonna know what it is. And I really don't know why you guys can't know what it is right now. I'm just, I just have the opinion that you shouldn't. <laughs> so, too bad. I'm a bait maker of the opinion that the weight in a crankbait like this doesn't just go right here where the line tie is. A lot of guys put weight on the line tie right there. Like they attach it to the through wire and then put it in the bait. I like my weight a little bit back, like right there. It helps with casting. I think it makes for a more stable action. It makes for a more universal action. It's more pleasant to fish with at all speeds. You can rip it a little bit and it still stays very stable because the weight's placed a little bit further back. You can mess around with placements of weights and lots of variables and there's a lot you can do and it, you'll still have a good bait in the end. I'm shooting for just to get down to six feet with this thing. Just being able to come off the bank a little bit and get to like secondary points and stuff and they're a little bit deeper down and stay a foot off the bottom on those. I think that's where the fish might be right now. And what fish doesn't want a mirror cart? Look what we got, our favorite ingredient in bait making, right behind baking soda. We're just dripping it on, getting that wire secured, covering up the entire hook slot as well. The front hook hanger ended up a little bit, what is it doing on the camera? It's doing this. I kind of wish it was just straight out, but it, it's kind of doing this, but that's where I want it. So I ended up not changing that at all. I could have pushed that a different angle and then put the super glue on and it'd be there forever, but I got to leave it right there because that's where I want my hook hanger. Other than that, this is a very clean wire form. Super happy. They all come out pretty much the same length. Let's drill a lead hole. I want a half inch one. This is a fat bait and this is balsa so I can put a lot of lead in it and get it super stable. We're going half. My drill press is so wobbly. I like it when there's a big half inch hole under a big chunk of balsa, don't you? You just, you just know it's gonna work. Oh. Forgot to plug this bad boy in. And no, I'm not doing that on purpose just to read comments. I'm, I just forgot to plug this in. Make a checklist. That way you don't forget every time. One day. Okay, let's read some comments while the lead pot heats up. I don't read every, I don't just, I look for good comments. I don't just read every comment. So I'm looking for a good one. 
When I was in high school shop class, we used to use sawdust from the wood we cut or sanded or mix, and they mixed it in with either wood glue or white glue to match the color of the wood. So he said, maybe try that instead of super gluing baking soda. No, no, absolutely not. Super glue and baking soda will never leave this channel and I will always use it in every application I possibly can. Next question. You should make an otter lure. That's a really good idea. That has a clam on his tummy. Even better idea. With the weight in the back so he swims face up. So cute. Thanks, Kelsey. That's a great idea, actually. An otter with a clam on his belly swimming on his back, top water. Gets demolished by a muskie. Just bitten in half. All of that. The clam breaks too. It's a good idea. It would be cool to do a live video sometime. I actually do live videos every once in a while, but I never do them on my accounts. I do them on other people's accounts, like Epic Bait Molds Instagram, uh, Nick Rundle 03 Instagram, I do, I do it on there once in a while. Never on my own, I don't, I'm just kind of scared of that. You know what I mean? It was a sad day, but lure heaven has gained a flub dub. Be free flub dub. Fly high, swim true, be free. We will miss you and carry on your tale. Gone but not forgotten. Sad face, sad face, sad face, sad face, sad face. Ever missed. That was in tribute to the flub dub. I don't know if I casted it and it popped off or I snagged it. I probably snagged it in the river. That's a pretty common theme on this channel. Poor flub dub. How expensive is it to make your own lures? I need something to do when I'm not hunting or fishing. Uh, I would say it's, it's pretty expensive. I assume you're talking about soft plastics because that's the video you commented on, but all of this in my shop, if you want to get all the stuff I've gotten over the years, I mean, I probably got 10 or $12,000 worth of stuff in this shop, but I've been doing this for years and years, almost eight years now. Soft plastics, you want to get started with an initial investment and you want to be able to make baits that you like off of that initial investment. Injector, plastic, colorants, stuff, more stuff, and probably a little bit more stuff. I would say don't be scared of spending four or five hundred dollars to start and then you're going to get addicted. This is a multi-thousand dollar thing racking up over the years. Hey man, you want a hobby? You want to you play with things? You need to buy those things, you know? It costs money. Maybe you could barter though. Maybe sell off one of your other hobbies and get into lure making. I'm sure all of you are smart enough to figure out things like that and make things happen in your own life. Why do you even ask me questions? Just notice Marling's got square fingertips. I don't know, they're kind of round. I'm trying to make them look square and I'm not doing it. I can't achieve that. But I don't know, is that a type of fingertip, a square fingertip and it's just, that's the name of that kind of fingertip and you notice that I have those? I don't know. All right, enough of my fingertips. I think the lead's hot. I think, yeah, lead's hot. I'll sprinkle that baking soda on some super glue I already poured on there. Perfect. Nice and bottom heavy. It stays up like that. Beautiful. I'm gonna get all this smoothed off on the belly and we're gonna carve some gills into this. Just gills, I'm not gonna go crazy. Just interested in giving this bait some gill structure and that's it. It's been my experience that you cannot get balsa to look clean with just a knife. That wood wants to mush before it cuts. You gotta rely on some sanding techniques or something or microfiles to get it looking actually clean. Don't be discouraged while carving balsa. You just need a flat edge on your sandpaper and get it in there. That is a lot better than that. And that, that's what I'm talking about. That's what the sandpaper will do. Mirkart is getting the super glue bath. Wow, I even forgot to unplug my lead pot. Man, it's still going over there. I just heard it. All right. Super glue bath and everything. We gotta uh, cut this lip out still though. That was slightly overlooked. What am I going for? Probably the biggest circle on that thing right there. I can't tell what's straight. Bob Saget. 
I want to, I'm eyeballing this. I should not, never eyeball a lip. Do it very accurately, but I'm eyeballing this. Don't do what I do. Once again, great example for your kids. <laughs> Give it one more look, see if I want a different shape or not. I do. I want a wider, wider lip. Wow. I am just so confident in the stability of this bait that I am going as wide as I possibly can with this piece of plastic here. Sorry, this piece of polycarbonate to be more specific. That's a thick lip, that's gonna be good. That's gonna be perfect. I want some depth, I want that lip to grab a lot of water and send this thing as deep as it can go. That'll do. You know, maybe polishing a lip does have a function when it comes to the lure and catching fish. Maybe it makes it less visible. You're not as likely to spook a fish or turn a fish away. I've always said in my videos, this is purely for aesthetic purposes, but maybe it's not. I usually just get it down to 220. This is 220. There's no number on the back of that, but this is 220. And then I polish it on a strop, the edge of the lip. It's the quickest I've found to do it. You don't have to bring it to a buffing wheel even. It's this fast. As you can see, that's a beautifully polished like satin edge. I like that better than the complete see-through. Super fine finished edge. And this is, that's the unfinished, that's 220. It's really quick, easy. I guess you need a strop, but. The lip of this mirror carp is where it needs to be. Yes. That's it. Too bad my super glue bottle is clogged. That happens when you use super glue as much as I do. Happens a lot. Make sure my lip is still in the correct spot, it is. And now it's not going anywhere, ever. Never have I had a lip pop out with this technique. I'm very generous with the accelerator. I want all that super glue dry because, I don't know, just working with it so much, it, it's dangerous. Little piece of super glue that's not set somewhere and you put your finger on it and then you got a fingerprint in your bait, you got to sand out and it never sands out all that well. And But that lip's in there. That is the bait unpainted. I need to drill the eye sockets real quick. And know what eyes I'm using. I have only one choice, really. Mirror carp have tiny eyes, and these are quarter inch, very natural looking eyes. And even that's big for a mirror carp, but I want to use these because they're very natural looking. I just got them off Amazon. I'm gonna sand this for a bit because I have a neurotic sanding issue. But when I'm done with the sanding, it's ready to paint. I think it has the shape, it has the look. Once I get those holographic looking scales on there, which by the way, that's what I'm using is some holographic vinyl. I'm gonna cut the scales as best I can and lay them each on here individually to get the mirror carp look. But those scales that they have in such an ugly way will be exaggerated with holographic vinyl foil stuff. Mm. That'll look good. <sighs> Starting with Wicked UV Glow Base. I bet you weren't expecting that. There's a reason. It's not because I want this lure to glow or anything, but it's because this is really thick. I think this is the stuff I'm thinking of. I've not even used it yet. Yeah, that's the stuff, it's thick. But because balsa wood, it's always got the fuzzies. It's always got a rough finish just because the wood's that way. I'm gonna try to reduce that by putting a transparent base on it before the white. I think it'll help. I have yet to test it though. And yes, we will see if this glows under the UV light. Oh wow, it does. It's blue, but you take it out and it's just wood. Whoa. Okay, now we're gonna get the white on it. I think that helped with getting it smooth. So the layers of paint that you actually see under the clear coat, they are or will be smoother than what it would be without that stuff. Still kind of a bumpy texture, but I can deal with that. I always have. <laughs> Nothing new here. Got a dark gray, very dark, almost black. Half of the bait 
on the top. Like there's the center line of the bait and then the top of that, I'm gonna paint this color. Like that. And then the other half is getting a flesh tone. Like that. The whole thing just got a thin coat of gold, but I applied more gold in some spots than others, like on the belly down there and on the gills. But this is the base of this mirror carp so far. I might darken the top a little bit more, but that's a good start. And just like with the mother chaser that we did, this foil is going to give this bait some accents. This is holographic. This is silver. Well, this isn't even silver. This is just holographic. Generally, the scales on a mirror carp are gold. Not on this one. I want more than that. I want some flash. I want it to look crazy. Realism's overrated, man. Get myself a piece. And they are some strangely shaped scales too. There's like an undercut or a, there's a concave cut on the other side from the outside of the scale. There's probably a much better way to say that, but they're like moon shaped. And then some of them aren't, some of them have a point, so. I think I'm safe to just go at it and not be very accurate with this stuff at all. Like that can be a scale. Wow, you can't see that at all, I'm sorry. <laughs> that can be a scale. And then there's other ones that can be small that are like that. Just ugly stuff, you know? And plaster it all over the side of this bait. Some mirror carps have a bunch of scales and other mirror carps have one. So don't think that I'm lazy by just doing a few. <laughs> I'm not gonna do it like this picture either. I'm gonna come across the entire body with a line, I think, and maybe do a little cluster towards the head and that's it. And I have to do this for both sides of this bait. A little bit of a process here. No big deal, I got time. It's only 12.44 right now. So all those right there, that's, that's all the scales I'm gonna do on one side. I'm gonna get my razor scissors out. I'm not even gonna try to cut these with a X-Acto knife or something like that. Scissors, man. What an adorable scale. Mm -mm -mm. Let's just see what it looks like with a scale on. There's a scale. <laughs> I think I need to do a lot of them for the whole picture, you know. I'll get back to you when I got a lot of them on here. Meticulous work right here. Not bad though. That was actually extremely hard to get anything that resembles anything kind of natural out of the shapes of these scales and where to place them. I'm happy with that considering how difficult of a time I was having. Scales on a mirror card, other side. And as is tradition, the other side is taking half as long but looks twice as good because I already did one side and I knew, I knew the mistakes I made and everything and this side's looking better. That's just a part of lure making. I just have to accept it. That's got a beautiful lateral line down the middle though. This side, it was like more random and I used small ones. I should have used big ones going down the middle. That looks better. This is thumbnail side. This is hide it as much as I can from the camera side. I'm gonna put the rest of these up by the head, little clusters. So I saved these painting steps till after I get these scales on and they're all on. Looks great. This side looks great. Pretty nifty. I mean, that kind of yells in your face. Mirror carp, just because of those scales. Before it didn't. Don't look at that side. Eh, that's not bad either. They, they have their own style. Fat scales down the side, skinny scales with big scales around the head. I don't know, it's not that bad. I like this side better. But as I was saying, I saved this step till now on purpose because I think this will do stuff to the holographicness of these scales and make it look better. Some of you might be thinking that that looks ridiculous. Like those scales don't look anything like a meerkarp scale. They're just too shiny and flashy and I should never use vinyl stuff again, but I like the vinyl stuff, so. Yeah. You see that? Just that tiny little bit of chartreuse. Needs a smidge of more. That's depth, people. That looks good. Look at the pictures. Remember before it was just a flesh tone? You see that mirror carp, that color? Boom, there it is. Before it was just blah, but now there's that little hint of yellow, little hint of green. Oh, I guess I could just show you this side. <laughs> Remember before? We have no reference as to what was before. Just kidding. There it is. There it is now. That's better. It's a sucker, so it needs a little bit of red around the mouth. That's just tradition. What else? 
A lot of these mirror carp I'm seeing, along the body they have those striations, ribs. I think if I came back with a silver or a platinum, I could mimic those pretty well and then I can give the last detail around the gills and stuff that same platinum color. And then the bait's done after I glue the eye on and clear coat it. Sounds good to me, that's the plan. Beautiful. That was the detail it needed. It even put some of that on the gills there. You get that iridescence-ness and pearlizedness at different angles. I'm happy with that. <laughs> Very happy with that. It's a beautiful one day right there. Clear coat. If I can just dip this bait, I will, but if I gotta break out the paintbrush too, I'll do that. It's looking like the paintbrush is necessary. Come on, Alumalite. Restock your website. If you guys know of any other brands too that sell UV clear coat, let me know. I'm not an Alumalite fanboy. I just, I use a lot of their stuff. You gotta get a good look at it. Make sure you didn't miss nothing. I missed something. I actually didn't miss nothing. Double negative means I missed something. Getting learned with a bait maker. I'm so happy with this bait right now. That worked out good. That's beautiful. Let's hang her up. Some of that glow is coming through actually. That UV base, and then it's making the whole bait glow. I didn't use any fluorescence. That's just the UV base. That's kind of cool. There has not been a feather treble on this channel for a while. But Chelsea's been so busy with fin and everything. And I don't tie my own. Chelsea ties mine, so. But that's the finished bait right there. Look at those, oh, that holographic mirror carp scales. That was a good choice in my opinion. I love that holographicness. All done. We are tied up. We are ready to go. It's getting real. Time to make it official. See you at the pond. This was a tough decision to make, but we're here at the pond. I think this will be a good one. It's Bjornsson's, it's Kevin's. The temperature variations up and down so much recently. I just don't know. I'm just gonna start here. I only have time for one spot today, by the way. In a couple hours, the sun will be down, so I hope this was the right choice. Boy, those scales give off some kind of crazy reflection that I am trying to capture on my camera. Like that. Crazy holographic scales. Okay, let's fish. It's so weird, there's always that weird pause when I have to take a thumbnail. And it's like, okay, now I can fish. Anticipation. see it floats it floats very hard a lot of it sticking up out of the water i could have put more lead in it oh and it cranks hard okay that is a hard tight crank wow it wants to be a wake bait but it's not gonna be this is gonna be a crank Goodness, that's beautiful. That floats up so hard though. I wish it would I wish it would float up a little slower. It's not the cold water wintertime action you you really want, but the wobble is. The wobble is very tight. So I'm, I'm, I can't jerk this. I'm gonna fish it like a normal crankbait, not a jerk bait. It gets the right depth though. I'm touching the bottom. Off of what I've seen so far, it's probably like a six footer diver six foot diver i'm just gonna keep moving and casting i think this bait would be so good for summertime because it's almost top water if you have a slower retrieve and it just smacks oh i just got a fish that was quick fish on it's gonna be official what do we got? Looks like it's just a bass. Oh, that's exciting. 
they're biting here. Healthy bass too. For the first one. He has been feeding. Look at the mouth on that guy. I didn't I don't think there's crayfish in here. It's official! Bass like meerkarp. Wow. That's an awesome thing to make official. So satisfied. Be free. Freedom's that way. There you go. Ah, let's get another. Time for a big fish. I know, that one day was a success. Even though we only caught that one bass and I fished for hours after that with no fish, it was still a success. I caught a bass in like the first few casts and then nothing after that. It's 12 o'clock the next day, November 4th. It's beautiful out, light wind. I got my kayak in the back. I uh, rigged up a little boat anchor on some, on some paracord so I can stay in spot and uh, fish. We're at some backwaters on the river and I'm giving it another go just because I like fishing with this bait. I believe that's it. Let's get on the water. Nothing. Dang. Maybe that was just a really lucky catch. <laughs> Felt like I was gonna get a pike all day. Nothing. Oh well. Still a success. The mirror carp was beautiful. Let me go get it. One sec. It's a good lesson in like naturalism and trying to figure out what nature looks like when nature's really random too. Those scales, it's very hard to place those and it looks somewhat decent. Most of the time it just looks like garbage, but yes, I'm still working on that one lure I'm giving you sneak peeks of. I do this every time I give you a sneak peek because the weather becomes nice or a good idea pops into my head that I just wanna do now and stuff like that. The weather became nice and I decided to make this in a one day, but I'm still working on that one thing that I've been giving you sneak peeks of. Don't worry, it will come out. Projects like that go slow and I just take my time over the course of like three weeks. This video's over though. On to the next bait. <laughs> what the heck was that? I don't know, they're kind of round. Oh, come on. It was a fat bait. <laughs> Fly high, swim true, be free. 